Willis MB, Brake Line Installation, Part 1. Welcome to Team G503. I'm Scott Schiller, your host, and I'm going to start a three-part series on the brake line system on the Willis MB, and it's the same for the Ford GPW. I'm going to break it up into three short videos because there's a lot to cover in this subject. I'm going to do one for the rear axles, which is this one. I'm going to do one for the front axles, which will be the second one, and then I'm going to do a third one with all the lines and accessories that attach to the master cylinder. So thank you for watching. Let's get through this, and let's get right at it because we've got a lot to show you in the video. Before we get started with the video, this is a shot of what the brake line assembly on the rear axle should look like when it's completed. If you need to, you can come back to the beginning as a reference to the lines and the clamp locations. This is the rear axle T-bracket. It holds the brass T that goes on the rear axle cover, and it is part number A5227. The bracket is held in place by the two bolts that hold the differential cover on the rear axle. The bolt is size quarter inch by 20 by 7 eighths of an inch and it has a lock washer that coincides. Here's the brass T. It is part number 637432, and it's the same for the front axle as well as the rear axle. To install it, install the lock washer on the bolt, pass the bolt through the round center hole of the T, and then fasten that to the bracket that we have installed on the axle. If you notice here, the two bolts that hold the bracket on the axle go through the bracket first and then into the cover. I'm only gonna do this hand tight for the time being, and you'll see why later in the video. I installed the bracket when I installed the cover for the differential as they do have a torque value on the bolts. The round side of the brass T faces towards the front of the vehicle. We're going to be running our first brake line or tube over the axle tube to the wheel cylinder on the driver's side of the vehicle. Let's zoom into the back of the brake plate and there's your bleeder screw and there's the area or the opening that you're going to install your brake line to. It has a rubber cap and it was on there when I touched up the paint when I installed the back of the brake plates and it's kept the inside of the wheel cylinder nice and clean. Here's the brake tube or the brake line. It's part number A5225, and that goes to the driver's side of the vehicle. I am using a complete preformed brake kit from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. Let's take a look at the ends of the brake tubes or lines. There is a flare on the end of the line and a fitting that's already been preformed onto the line itself. If you look inside the brass T, you'll see that it's threaded inside and there's a slight little nipple on the bottom. This is what creates your seal on the lines. No sealant is required, nor is it recommended. Before I actually install this, I'll kind of show you how it works. The flare on the end will fit inside the brass fitting onto the nipple, and then the threads will thread into the brass and they'll create their own seal. It'll go about halfway in. Initially, you can install these fittings by hand, and that's what I'll be doing. I'm gonna be leaving everything loose and just threading these in by my fingertips in the initial install. I personally like to just get everything hand fitted and then go back and tighten everything up in case you have to adjust any of the lines. Move over to the wheel cylinder side and install the fitting the same way you did on the brass T. And again, just tighten it in finger tight for the time being. Make sure the line follows the contour it should on the top of the axle tube. Next, we'll install the liner tube to the passenger side of the vehicle. And if you notice, you'll see some asphalt coated loom that's on these lines. That'll come into play later. It seems to be easier to start at the brass T-fitting on the differential and then work your way to the wheel cylinders. So I've got this all set to go here. As you see, I've still got some movement and some play in the parts. I'll move to the outside of the wheel cylinder, and this one's a little difficult to go in, and if you're going to have to bend these lines or tubes in any sort of way, try not to do them too hard, just you know, a little slight pressure to move. The lines are formed pretty close to what they should be to fit, but you may have to make a little adjustment. Just try not to bend or kink the line. The clip that holds the line in place is located two bolts over to the right from the bracket that holds the T. I'll remove the bolt on the differential cover. The clip that holds the line in place comes with the brake line kit, and you'll have to open it up, and be careful when you do. You don't want to put a bend or a kink in that, but that goes on to the loom in the center like this on the bend, and what you'll have to do is you'll have to install this and pre-start it by your hand, and then you'll have to use some sort of tool to crimp it back to its proper location in order to get the bolt through it. I'll use a pair of slip joint pliers and I'll just crimp the end very, very lightly. You don't want to squeeze tight here just to get the bolt hole lined up on the clip so it lines up with the hole on the differential. Install the differential cover bolt through the clip with the lock washer and then fasten that back to the threads on the differential housing itself. After you get it finger tight, hold the clip in your hand and use a ratchet to tighten it and snug it back up. I'll have to go back and put the proper torque value on this bolt when I'm completely finished. 
We'll go back to the brass T now with a wrench and we'll fasten that bolt and tighten it securely to the bracket on the differential cover. Again, I like to start with the center T and work my way outside to the brake cylinders. Once you get this tight, you've still got a little play because you're going to have to make some adjustments in these lines. The idea is to keep the line off of any surfaces that it could rub on. We've got a clamp here that's got to go to the tube on the axle, so we want to make sure that we've got just enough room for that to be attached. Use a proper flare nut wrench on the fittings on the lines. You don't want to take the chance of rounding off the corners on the fittings or worse, twisting the tube and kinking it. Use your opposite hand to secure the line as you tighten the fittings. We'll move back to the T now and secure that end fitting. When you're tightening these, my rule of thumb is you run the fitting down until you feel it, what I will say, bottom out, and then try to get an eighth to a quarter turn just to make a proper seal. Repeat the process on the opposite line. Let's take a look at the clamp that holds the brake line to the tube on the axle. Its location is in the center of the tube and it goes over the top of a piece of the cotton loom. It is held in place with a screw. I want to show you something, however, because the reproduction clamps are not quite like the originals, but I think I've got a great solution. The reproduction clamps are the same design, however, the diameter of the clamp is a little too large. So what I'll do is I'll compare it against the original I took off the Jeep originally, and you see here there's no bend in that. But what I've done is I've taken a pair of needle nose pliers, and right across from where the screw is I've made this little loop. This loop will actually act as a standoff, and in my opinion is a little bit better than actually clamping it to the tube. Now, if you're after a correct Jeep, how it would have came from the factory, you'll have to locate or find or use your original clamps as this one is. Here's how I installed the clamp on the tube. I've got the screw facing towards the front of the Jeep and the tongue of the clamp facing upwards. On the back side here, you can see my little modified standoff, how it keeps the line away from the tube of the axle, and I've got it centered on the asphalt loom. This is going to work out just perfectly, I believe, in my case. The last part we need to install on the rear line assembly is the 15-inch flex hose, which is part number 637424. It goes to the brass T on the front side. Be sure to install the copper crush washer onto the male portion of the flex hose as shown here. Once you've got that crush washer in, you can go ahead and thread it on to the brass tee at the round opening on the end. The copper crush washer is what completes the seal and is often overlooked and then you wind up having a leak. Using the correct flare nut wrench, tighten the fitting slowly and steadily and be sure to keep constant pressure. At the very end, you want to make sure you have it tight enough to crush the copper washer and complete the seal. Looking from the rear of the Jeep, underneath the machine gun mount on the cross member, you will notice a factory hole. The female end of your 15-inch flex hose is inserted inside that hole and is held in place with a clip on the inside of the cross member. Here's the clip. As you see here, it's got a slight bend to it. Face that bend upwards towards you and insert it onto the fitting in the groove in the brass. Your rear brake line system is complete. One last point before the video ends, make sure you have a clean working environment while working on brake lines. You don't want to contaminate anything and cause yourself issues in the future. If you like what we're doing here, you can subscribe to us at Team G503 on YouTube for the restoration of a 1943 Willis MB.